I want to make sure that everybody is able to use the definition where we take the limit of the Riemann sum to calculate the area under a curve. So we are going to use the left side, the limit as n goes to infinity of our Riemann sum as k goes from 1 to n, f of x sub k bar times delta x, height of my rectangles times the width of my rectangles as my number of rectangles goes to infinity. Remember this as n goes to infinity is the same as the value of our definite integral, area under the curve. So the function we're going to use for our example, we are going to go from 0 to 4 for x squared plus 2 dx. So some pieces I need. I need to know, well, what's delta x going to be? So b minus a over n. So b is 4, a is 0. So 4 minus 0 over n. So delta x is 4 over n. The next thing I need is some sort of representation for x bar sub k. Remember this x bar sub k stands for any point in the different chunks, right? In those different partitions, the different rectangle widths, this is any x value in there. Now since it can be any x value in there, I'm going to choose the one that's easiest for me to write, and that is the right-hand endpoints. So the right-hand endpoints had the characteristic a plus k times delta x. So a was 0, k times delta x. So I'm going to say then my x bar sub k is k times delta x. Oh, but k, delta x is 4 over n. Fabulous. I am almost done gathering pieces here. So now I need to evaluate my function at x bar sub k. So my functions, okay, can you all see the function there? Here's f of x hiding out there. So I need to evaluate that at the x value of 4k over n. So whatever we give it, so we're going to take 4k over n squared plus 2. I'm not sure how I'm going to want that in a minute, but I'll go ahead and square, get rid of my parentheses. 16k squared over n squared plus 2. Okay, I think I'm ready to plug all of those values in to my limit. And I might hold off writing that limit as n goes to infinity until I get a little bit further down the sum. So let's take a little walk down the path of writing out our sum. So summation symbol, k, my dummy variable that just counts all the integers from 1 to n, of f of x bar sub k, so that's right here, so 16k squared over n squared plus 2 times delta x, which is now being played by 4 over n. So within this summation expression, right, k is the thing that's changing between 1 and n. This 4 over n on the outside here, this is not at all affected by what's happening to k. So since it's therefore a constant, a constant multiple, it's multiplying everything, I'm going to go ahead and move it out in front just to kind of tidy stuff up inside there. So 4 over n is going to move out front. I'm still adding from 1 to n, 16k squared over n squared plus 2. Okay, I'm going to break it up again. So now I have the sum of a sum and our sum properties, our summation properties, how about that, says that I can split that up into two. 
So break this apart, make sure we're not going to get confused. My 4 over n still tagging along. Remember, it's going to distribute. So if I drop some parentheses, you guys catch me later. So we sum 16k squared over n squared plus the sum of 2. Put in my summation limits. Oops, sorry. Getting close. Second one. Okay, that one we have a formula for. Don't worry, I'm going to bring the card out here in a second. First one, the sum of 16k squared over n squared, I'm going to use my same pull out everything that doesn't change out in front of the sum symbol. Okay, so I'm going to sneak over here. Here we come. 4 over n out in front of everybody. Now out in front of this summation symbol, I'm going to get a 16 over n squared sum k squared, k goes 1 to n, plus sum of 2 as k goes from 1 to n. Okay, I need my formulas. If you know the formula for summing the first n integer squared, I think I had said my squared in the wrong place, the sum of the square of the first n integers. Um, go ahead and write that one down. I don't, so I'm going to look at my handy dandy formula. The second one I do know. Here we go though. Here's our formula card. So if I'm summing up k squared as k goes from 1 to n, this part, that first sum, its value is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. So 4 over n stays, 16 over n squared stays, but now this whole summation, is equivalent to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all over 6. Right, and those are multiplying fractions, so we'll just do that and call it multiplying. Second piece, stay with me. So this sum of 2, SK, I don't, I, I can't, why can't I bring the 2 out? Why does the 2 not come out? Because it's not multiplying some other K. But if I factor it out, I just leave behind a 1, so that's not really saving me anything. So I'm adding 2 up essentially 1 to n times. Okay. So that sum, and you can find it here on my formula card, the sum of a constant is k, different letters, right, so it's a different, it's not going to be a multiplying thing. The sum of a constant as k goes from 1 to n is however many of those I have times that constant, so c times n, or in this case, Right, 2 times n. So this whole summation in green is the same thing as 2n. I'm getting really, really close to bringing that limit back. I know, it looks super ugly. I agree. Let's see if we can do just any kind of minute tidying. Is there anything that will make us a little bit happier? Um, Gosh, I'm not really seeing it. Well, here, I'm going to try something. We'll see what this does for us. So that first, so I'm going to take my 4 over n, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute it through its parentheses. So I'm going to have 4 times 16 times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. And then in the bottom, it looks like I have 6n cubed. Okay. In the second spot, all right, looks like that's just 8, right? My n's would cancel. Okay. Now I'm going to ask, we're going to talk about limits, and we're going to talk about what the leading term in the numerator of that first fraction is. So you guys have to go think way back to limits 
from probably the chapter two of your calculus book. Okay. So in my numerator, if I multiplied it all out, and I was kind of freaking out a second ago, it's like, I don't want to have to multiply that out. And you know what? I'm not going to because it's really just the leading term, right? The, the degree of n and its coefficient um, that matters to me. So that leading term in the numerator is going to be, what do I have? A 64 times 2, so a 128 n cubed, right? Plus there'll be some other um, c sub 1 n squared plus dot 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 plus a constant, no, not even a constant. So I have this in the numerator, a 6 n cubed in the denominator, plus 8. Okay, I'm ready to do a limit. You guys ready? So, I'm going to take the limit as n gets infinitely large of 128 n cubed, n times n times n, plus other stuff, over 6 n cubed, plus 8. So remember, as n gets big, it's just the leading terms. And these n cubed, what happens to them? Exactly. Gone. Right? It's those coefficients that matter. So 128 over 6 plus 8. Oh, gosh. What's 126 over 8? I can't believe I'm going to have to do this. So 3, um, oh, there we go, 21 and two-thirds, is that right? 20, one, two left over thirds, plus eight, 29, and two-thirds. Hey, guess what? We can check to see how we did. Ugh, I'm nervous, here we go. We can use the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, part two. To see if we remembered our limits correctly or not. So let's, here we go. So I need an antiderivative for my two pieces. So antiderivative of x squared, so x cubed over 3, antiderivative of a constant, tack on an x. I don't need a plus c because I have limits of integration from 0 to 4. We start by plugging in the top number for all my x's. in by plugging the bottom number in for all my x's. Those are zero, so they go away, which is great. So what am I going to get? Uh, 64, oh, I'm going to do this division because that's what I did up here, so I think I might get the numbers better. Uh, 2, 1, 21, and a third. Oh, did I do my math wrong up there? Somebody checking my arithmetic. 64 thirds plus 8. 64 thirds is 2, 1, 21 and a third plus 8. I'm getting 29 and 1 third. Where did I make my mistake? 20. I'm off by a third. Okay, somebody find it for me. Let me know where it went. I need it back. Okay, well, should be the same. I'm not re-recording, so you guys can put it in the comments if you find where that one-third went away. Okay, thanks.